Let me briefly review why do we care about stress transformation. In other words, why do we need to learn stress transformation problem? Let me provide you with this example. At the very beginning of mechanics of materials, we talked about axially loaded elements, right? Consider this element, which is restrained from the left side and is subjected to a force of F at the right side. We have learned that there will be normal stress and the magnitude of that would be force over area. Also, we learned that if we want to design this element, like how much is the maximum force that can be carried by this element, or how much is the, how much is the required cross-section area if the force is given. In that case, I would need to make sure that the magnitude of stress is smaller than allowable stress. In this element, is there any shear stress developed because of that axial force? No, we learned that shear stress is produced by shear force or torsion, just these two. Normal force is not producing shear stress. So let's consider the case that this is made from a material that is strong in normal stress, but it is weak in shear stress. And as a matter of fact, there are many materials in engineering that are behaving in this way, like steel. Steel is usually strong in tension, but it fails much faster in shear. If we have such a material, do we need to be worried about shear part of that? There is not any shear stress here. Yes, we do. We need to design that against shear. But where is the shear? The shear is hidden in the point inside the element after we rotate the element. That's why we need to learn about stress and strain transformation. Okay? Look at this. This is stress element for the for the element that we talked about. And when I'm talking about when I'm talking about stress element, I mean one point, one dot, one tiny element. In that one tiny element, we know that stress is in horizontal. There is no shear, there is no vertical normal stress. But if we rotate that element, if we look at the same point from different angle, there will be shear stresses. It will. Now, what we are looking for is how much are the magnitude of shear stresses and normal stresses after we rotate the element, or how much are maximum normal stress and shear stress at that, in that point. Because if we want to design, we need to make sure that the maximum stresses are smaller than the allowable stress in that point, right? So this why? is the reason of why we are interested in determining uh, using the stress transformation equations.